Today I want to demonstrate how to use a vernier calipers to measure the depth of a beaker but instead of using a beaker I'll be using a cup for my illustrations. This is Kisembo Academy and thanks for tuning in. The vernier caliper like any other is a measuring instrument. This measuring instrument is used to measure small lengths like the thickness of a book, the thickness of a pencil, the, th uh, the external and internal diameter of tubes and so forth. In today's video we are going to look at how we use this vernier caliper to measure these things. This is Kisembo Academy and thanks for tuning in. Right before us is a picture, a diagram of a vernier caliper. This is the vernier caliper we are talking about. This vernier caliper has got what we have the inside jaws. These are what we're calling the inside jaws right here. Those are the inside jaws. Then we have the outside jaws. They are right here down. These are the outside jaws. Now these outside jaws are used to measure external diameters. These inside jaws are used to measure internal diameters like we are going to illustrate. Now the vernier calipers has two kinds of scales. We have what we call the vernier scale and the main scale. Now the main scale is this long one. It runs from zero up to the end. Looking at our vernier, looking at this here, our main scale, it runs from zero right here up to the very end, up to here. This is our main scale. Then the vernier scale is just down here. It is along this sliding jaw. We have this jaw. This jaw is fixed. This one is sliding. It slides along the main scale. Now this jaw that is sliding it has got some graduations on top of it and these graduations are the ones that make up what we call the vernier scale. So the vernier scale is always the one that is sliding, the main scale, this one is fixed. When we are taking measurements for vernier caliper, we are supposed to read our main scale, then afterwards we read our vernier scale and after reading our vernier scale, then we are able to add up the two figures and we are able to find the measurement. Now, in preparing ourselves to use this, we're supposed to first check the locking screw and loosen it. This is what we call the locking screw up on top. We're supposed to first loosen it so that this jaw is able to slide freely. This on top here is what we are calling the locking screw. According to our diagram, it is that. So we're supposed to first look in that locking screw. Then now, before measuring, you're supposed to ensure that the calipers read zero when fully closed. Now, these are the calipers. Let's fully close them. When we fully close them and you bring you bring closer, you're supposed to make you're supposed to ensure that it is at zero. Now, at zero, if you can realize, if you see the vernier scale and the main scale, the vernier scale is supposed to be having. The lower line of the vernier scale is supposed to be coinciding with the zero mark on the main scale. The first line on the vernier scale is supposed to be coinciding with the zero mark on the main scale when the thing is fully closed. Right there it is fully closed. Then you're supposed to make sure that you, may, you clean the, surface, the surfaces you're going to measure. Then afterwards you take the measurements. For example, if I'm going to measure this pen's diameter I'm supposed to make sure that the diameter surfaces here are clean, they are smooth, then I'll take the measurement. So when I want to take the measurement of this pen, it is very simple. I'm going to simply get this, put these jaws, the outside jaws in between the pen, then I slide like that. Then I'll take my readings. This is a beaker right here. If I want to measure the internal diameter of the beaker, I simply take my, my vernier calipers. I'll this time use the internal, the inside jaws because I want to measure the internal diameter and then I will slide like that. I make sure that the jaws have gripped this beaker. After the, when the jaws have gripped the beaker just like that, then I can take the readings right here. The vernier scale and the main scale. If I want to find the external diameter of this beaker. I'm going to use these external jaws and still I'll grip this in between like this right there. 
and then I'll take my measurements. Before I dive into that, we know that besides using these vernier calipers to measure the depth of this cup, we can still use these vernier calipers to find the internal diameter of this. And if we are to find it, use the internal diameter of this, we simply are going to use these external jaws and we are going to slide it like that. Make sure that the, the inside jaws grip the cup like that and we are able to take our readings right there. Then if you want to find the external diameter of this, we are simply going to use these external jaws and we are going to put them in right there. We make sure that this, we slide this vernier scale. We ensure that the sliding jaw gets in grip with this in a certain way. And then we are able to take our readings right there. Now, the purpose of this video is to show you how we find the depth of this cup using these vernier calipers. Now, if you look at this vernier caliper, whenever I, am, I slide this, something outside here protrudes. When this thing is at the zero mark, let's look at it here. If you have to look at it closely right there, when the jaws are fully closed, the thing is at zero. As you can see right there, the main scale is at zero. And even the first graduation of the vernier scale is coinciding with the first, the zero mark on the main scale. That is when the jaws are fully closed. And when it's at that point when the jaws are fully closed, you notice that at the back of my vernier caliper, we are having a certain strip right here. This strip is tied to this sliding jaw, this one here. So when I slide this jaw, this strip at the back, this one, it protrudes out. So when the jaws are fully closed, this strip is also it's just at the edge of the vernier. So when I start sliding this right there, like that, this strip starts protruding out like that. So the more I slide this, the longer this thing protrudes out. So now what do we do? When our vernier calipers is fully closed, I'm going to get this vernier. This is my cup. I want to measure the depth of this. So I'll start sliding so that this thing comes out, this. So when it starts coming out, this is what I'm going to use and put right in there. So as I slide my jaw, this thing protrudes out and then I dip it right there. So I'll just keep regulating this sliding jaw right here. So you realize that when I adjust the sliding jaw, this protrusion, that metal strip, goes up to the to the bottom of this cup and so it means that the depth of this cup is just this distance so it means that this distance which is the depth of this cup is going to coincide with the distance this sliding jaw has moved from here to that point so it means that after measuring my depth like that i'll simply come here to my vernier caliper and I'll take the readings. It is as simple as that. So for those of you who do not know how to take the readings, then I'll continue and show you how we take readings on the vernier caliper. So when you are talking, talking about readings on the vernier caliper, we are going to record two readings. There is the reading we call the main scale reading. This is the main scale reading. Then we have the vernier scale. Now the vernier scale is this thing that is sliding. That's the vernier. It has got small graduations on top, some graduations on the vernier scale. And it is from this vernier, and it is from these graduations of the vernier scale that we are able to take the reading of the vernier scale. So how exactly do we take this reading? This is how we do it. We shall first take the main scale reading. And now if you look at our main scale, we have 10. Then 11. Of course, this is 10, 10.1, 10 10.2, 10 10.3, 10 10 10 10 10.9, then 11. So what we do is that we're going to read our main scale from this figure 10 up to the point where the vernier scale begins from. The vernier scale begins from this point. So it means that we are going to read our main scale up to the point where it stops. So our main scale is going to be 10, 10.1, 10 10.2. So it means that we stop there just before we start where the main the vernier scale starts from. So our main scale is 10.2. So our main scale reading here is 10.2. And of course it is in centimeters. 
Now then we start reading our vernier scale. Now our vernier scale has got graduations that are not numbered. But we are supposed to be counting these sticks. If, we, if I may label them, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we are going to count these graduations right from 0. And then the one we stop on, we are going to stop on the one that first coincides with a line in the main scale. So if you look at it, these ones here, if you look at this first graduation 0, it does not coincide with anything in the main scale. Look at the 1, it does not coincide with anything. 2 doesn't. 3 doesn't. 4 doesn't. Then we have the fifth line. The fifth line is the first line to coincide with a line in the main scale. So when we reach on that fifth line, we stop there. So it means that our vernier scale is running from 0 up to 5. So when we reach the fifth line, then we are going to write our main scale, but we are going to multiply it by 0 0.01. Why? Because our vernier scale is meant to give us the second place of decimal. That is the importance of this vernier scale. So much as we have counted from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to the fifth, it means that we are going to get this as 5 times 0 0.01 and of course our answer there is 0 0.05 so it means our vernier scale here is 0 0.05 and then when we add it means that our overall answer is 10.25 that's in centimeters so it means that our vernier scale reading is 10.25 centimeters let's do some one more example we're going to do the same thing as before we are going to count our main scale first and we are going to stop at the point where the vernier scale begins from. So the vernier scale reading begins from here. So it's going to be 7, 7.1, 7 7.2, 7 7.3, 7 7.4, 7.5, 7.6. So we stop here. So it's going to be 7.6. Of course, that's in centimeters. Then we get to our vernier scale. Our vernier scale has got those graduations. So let's label them. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we begin. 1 does not coincide with anything. The 0, then we have the 1, does not coincide. 2, nothing. 3, then we have the 4th. Then we have the 5th again. The 5th line coincides with the first line, coincides with the line in the main scale. They're in the same straight line. So it means again, just like before, it's our, um, it's going to become 5 times 0 0.01. We multiply it by 0 0.01 because the vernier scale gives us the accuracy to the second place of decimal. So our answer here is going to become 0 0.05. And when we add, we get 7.65 centimeters. And that is how we take readings on a vernier scale and that is how we use this vernier scale to find the depth of a cup or a beaker or a vessel. Just like the vernier calipers, the micrometer screw gauge is also another of the measuring instruments. And right there we are having a diagram, micrometer screw gauge. The parts of this diagram are what we call the anvil. Looking at it, the anvil is just right here. We have what we call the spindle. Here is what we call the spindle. Then we have the frame, which is that. We have the sleeve. The sleeve is right here. The sleeve is this portion. The thimble. The thimble is this, this thing that is rotating. The thimble. It has a scale. Thimbo is right here, the sleeve is right there. And they both have scales. The thimbo has a scale that is round it, then the thimbo. So when you when I rotate this, the thimbo slides slides all over the sleeve. Then we have what we call the ratchet. The ratchet is just this thing at the back. This is the ratchet. 
it's what I use when I want to measure something for example if I want to measure the diameter of this I'm going to come and put it right in between there Now, the ease of this ratchet, I will put something right in front, in between there. But I am not sure whether this thing has been gripped so that I start taking my readings. I'm supposed to start taking my readings after making sure that this thing that I'm going to measure has been gripped. So what I do is that I will turn using my ratchet. Now, the ratchet will start making that noise. Now, that noise... That noise you've hear, you've heard, it means that whatever I'm going, I've put here has been firmly gripped. So because it has been firmly gripped, then that's that is when I can now begin to take the, the the readings. So now we are going to look at how we take readings. When we are taking readings with a micrometer screw gauge, we are going to first look at the sleeve reading, and then the thimble reading, and then after we add those two. So it is as simple as I'm going to show you. Here is an extraction. This is what we are calling the sleeve. This is the thimble. So the sleeve reading, then plus the thimble reading, and we get our final answer. So if you look at this, we are having 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 5.5, 6, then 6.5. So it means our thimble reading is going to be 6. Point. Our sleeve reading is going to be 6.5. That is sleeve. Our sleeve reading is 6.5. So what about our thimble reading? So our thimble reading is, is, is the, this longitudinal line. It is coinciding with that line in between. So this is the one we take. We take the reading, the line, the, 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 the point along the thimble. The point we take for our reading is the point that coincides with the horizontal line on the sleeve. If you have to realize so closely, our sleeve has got a horizontal line in between. Now, as we keep turning this, that horizontal line keeps coinciding with several points along the thimble. The thimble. So, when we are taking the thimble reading, we take the reading of the line or the graduation on the thimble that is coinciding with the horizontal line on the sleeve. So in this case, this line is coinciding with that mark. So we read it. This is 25, this is 30, 31, 32, 33. So it's coinciding with the 33rd line. So it means our thimble reading is going to be uh, 0 0.33. And then when we add this, it's going to become 6.83 like that it's going to be the same case here this is going to be 5 5.5 5 6 6.5 7 7.5 7 8 8.5 so meaning our sleeve reading is 8.5 millimeters now what about on our thimble reading? Now on our thimble reading, still this line here is what is coinciding with this longitudinal line. This line right here. And that line is 20, 21. It's a 21st. So it means our thim uh, thimble, our thimble reading is going to be 0 0.21. When you add the two, you're going to end up with 8.71 millimeters and that's going to be our answer this brings us to the end of this video thanks for tuning in for more videos i encourage you to subscribe this is arnold ranga kuramia for kisembo academy